Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so uh, my name is Kong Ben. Um, I'm from Reef Ecology Lab of, uh, from NUS. Um, it used to be called Marine Bio Lab, and after this year, probably it won't be there anymore. So yeah. All right. Uh, sorry. Okay, uh, I'm here to present two experiments that are uh, two small and interesting experiments that uh, we have done a, f a couple of years back um, uh, to, 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 to demonstrate that uh, it's actually possible to transplant hard coral onto the seawall. Um, so let's get right into the backgrounds of uh, my study, our studies. I'm glad I chose some different men of Singapore to show you. This is 1973, this is 2009. Same old story, Singapore has gone through extensive modification of um, coastline uh, for the past 50 years. Today, 60% of the shorelines, um, Singapore's shoreline is actually consists of seawalls and brick waters. They are there to protect Singapore's uh, coastline. They are there to prevent erosion. They are there to protect the land from being eroded, which is big issues for Singapore, especially in view of the sea level rise for the next decades or so. Um, they are primarily uh, large granite boulders compacted together, uh, as shown here. Uh, you probably have seen in everywhere around Singapore. Um, it's pretty harsh conditions down there. Strong wave actions, very hot during the day especially. But despite these extreme environmental conditions, sea walls are known to actually harbor pretty good, you know, biodiversities. And our surveys on the uh, sea walls of Singapore shows that uh, we recorded up to 17 hard coral general uh, uh, that, is, uh, you know, that can be found on the seawalls of uh, Singapore. Um, high, pretty good number, um, high diversity, but the abundance is very low. So clearly, seawall can actually provide suitable substrates for recruitment and growth uh, of um, hard corals. And then comes the question, since we are talking about you know, moving biodiversities onto the urban environment, can we actually do something? Can we actually um, try to populate our seawall with biodiversities, with marine biodiversities? Well, that's the question that I'm asking here. Can coral transplantation be carried out onto the seawall? And if so, what species should we choose? How should we carry this out? Um, so, uh, we'll be presenting the two experiments that try to answer these questions, some aspects of these questions. Alright, this next results. The two experiments are more or less similar. Uh, the concept is simple. We collect the corals from the donor sites, from Raffles Lighthouse, from Pulakusu, and then we transfer them, uh, transfer and transplant them onto the southwestern uh, seawall of uh, St. John Islands. So in case you've got no idea where is this, this is St. John's Islands, Lazarus Islands, Kusu Islands. So we are transplanting corals onto here. Um, and in case you need to know the red color roofs here, these are DMSI facilities which we use quite a lot uh, during the experiments. Alright, the general procedures for both experiments is very similar. Uh, we just collect the coral colonies from the donor sites and then we cut them into pieces, literally cut them into pieces uh, of uh, three to five cm fragments and of course when we cut them into pieces it's pretty damn stress for them uh, so we let them stay in the, our high class hotel in TMSI uh, St. John's Islands uh, for a month before we move them down onto our target sea walls and then once we transplanted them, we monitor the, these fragments for over the next years, uh, every month over the next years. All right, for the first experiment, we chose four hard coral species. The first three are 
what we call massive hard coral species. Um, that means they go into boulders. Uh, and uh, they are pretty commonly found in uh, sea walls of uh, Singapore. Whereas the last one sort of like uh, acts as our negative control. Uh, it's a branching coral. It's not very. It's rarely seen on uh, sea walls of Singapore. So we have a hundred of fragments for each of the species, and we go down to the transplantation site. We look for the right suitable site, and then we sort of paste them onto the sea wall using uh, underwater epoxy. That's the white color bits that you see. Right here is how the transplants look like. I think a couple of months, three months, or four months after after transplantations, as you can see, the white color bits are obviously gone. It's taken over by the uh, coral polyps. Yep. And here is the result of how well they survive. Agropora branching corals. By the fifth month, there's only one left, which is shown in the previous picture here. This guy, so sole survivor, which managed to stay on by the end of the, our study period. Whereas the other three species have varying degree of success, with uh, Poritis doing pretty well by the end of the uh, study period. We still have about more than forty percent of them survive. By survive here, it also include they then managed to stay on to the seawall because a lot of these fragments actually got washed away. They are detached, they are missing in action when we go back the next month or so. So, um, but over here, detached fragments are considered them there. So for second experiments, this time round, we try to do something different. We choose only two species the best one that we had uh, in the previous experiments, Poritis, and then we choose another branching corals. We want to really see how well branching corals can do on the sea walls. So these two um, species, so this time around we tie them onto a plastic mesh like this. But we're also introducing another factors, another treatments. So um, instead of keeping the fragments in the uh, in in, tank, uh, in in the TMSI aquarium tank for uh, one month, uh, you know, for them to rest, for them to recover. This time round, we choose to let some of them stay for two months, some of them stay on for one month, and some of them, once fragmented, we just get them out into the you know real world, uh, in the in the sea wall immediately. All right. How do we transplant them? So all these small plastic meshes were tied onto a bigger plastic mesh. Uh, it's about one meter times one meter. And this bigger plastic mesh is anchored onto the seawall, like what, what you see here. So in total, we have 10 of these uh, big plastic meshes and about 240 uh, coral fragments. All right, and here are the results. Branching coral by 72 days, all gone. Uh, Possilopora. Very unfortunate. And as for varieties, they are doing very well. I mean, all the, uh, all the uh, study periods, uh, about 85% of them survive. You see a huge drop here, that's because one of the big plastic mesh got washed away. So, um, there were no significant difference between uh, conditioning periods. Um, and go into the discussions here. Obviously, seems like a massive corals are more likely to survive compared to the branching corals. Probably because the branching corals are usually the fast growing species and they just couldn't stand the environmental conditions on the sea wall. However, we do see Porcelopora colonies uh, naturally colonizing the study sites. So that's another thing that we need to investigate. Uh, well, SC2 conditioning of fragmented corals does not affect, as far as our experiments show, priorities coral fragments survivorship. What does this mean? It means that next time if you were to transplant priorities corals, you can just pluck it out from somewhere, cut them if you want, and bring them onto the seawall and just put them on the site. 
or you can choose to bring them back to the hotel for one or two nights before you bring them on to the real world. But what these experiments really show is, well, coral transplantation, hard coral transplantation on seawalls is possible. It can be done. Well, uh, one of the big issues that we need to work on is how we, how are we going to tr fix, how are we going to secure these coral fragments onto the seawall because seawall is high energy environment. We have lots and lots of fragments being washed away. So how are we going to tackle this issue? Well, it seems like if given a uh, you know, long-term effort, we probably can do a pretty good job in making our seawalls uh, you know, uh, a livable place. No, not really a livable place, but uh, uh, I don't know, coral heavens. And with that, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, NSI. Yes, I'm going to